Then, so our net change in fund balance, our beginning fund balance was 6018. Less, assuming less that amount would have been 5764. And we're ending up now at projecting to end up, instead of 5764, we're projecting to end up at 6101. Right, so it's a net 83,054. Projected revenues over expenditures and the budget called for a negative 253,912. I see. So, in aggregate, those two numbers then become the difference 336 ish, okay. 337. So okay, most so of that's in the revenue end. Yeah. So, okay, so we're. So, and is that all falling to estimated unassigned? The extra three, whatever? It does in the 2020 budget, yes. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, this could be kind of a head of a couple of pages, but on um, page 14, where you talk about the um, Um, the increase in interest income. Um, you know, this may be something we have to wait until 2019 closes, but I guess where is that going to go in 2020, and could we use that to use that additional income that we were expecting to potentially lower the increase? For well, the any positive budget outcome in 2019 uh, will fall to the fund balance. So the budgeting mechanism is what you want to take from the general fund balance for uh, 2020. Uh, one of the recommendations the staff discussed was putting that additional money into the debt service, so instead of letting an increase was held. Flat. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one of the reasons that that recommendation came forward is because again, I think this is going to get some good, uh, was good it, revenues this year. What wasn't that one of the things that we voted on was to use some of the some of those additional funds to stabilize debt payments? We did. But then this one hundred and thirty thousand is correct me if I'm wrong in addition to that, right? I would have to review the 2020 budget to see how those original projections line up here. Mm -hmm. But the 
2020 budget fund available fund balance presumptively would have included any of these things already in it. And that was kind of the metrics I laid out then that says if you wanted to apply more of that to debt service stabilization, then we could do that over a limited window so that uh, you know, we can reduce the debt service tax levy in that manner. And then come kid closure, we would see where we stand at that point. And then I was projecting the uh, a recess point of about 2.1 million. I know it's, I, I wrote the memo, so I happen to remember that yeah. number. But, but that's $400,000 more than what we're currently levying for debt service. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, if you could just take a look at, you know, what what that number was yeah. um, for 2020. Um, with, yeah. You know, if that included this interest, this $130,000 interest income. It, it, should have been, it should have included the tiger protection as at the time. Okay. This may have been revised slightly. I will, I will give you, I will give the whole committee a, a, a response on okay. the difference between this projection and the uh, projection at the time we sent out the okay. proposed budget. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a significant change. Mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, could we could change for 2020. If we, if we wanted to, I mean, I don't think we could change the 2020 budget now, but couldn't we put it in? Could we decide to put in extra capital reserves? And then during the year, fund something from capital reserves that we wanted to fund. Well, you number one, you can change the 2020 budget. That's the public hearing and then the final so board vote. Can we vote? So we have to. We you have would to have to move to amend the proposed budget as presented at that point, since it got out of committee. So that's what you'll be presented with. That's what we did the public hearing on. But there are opportunities to amend that if, if that's uh, what you desire to um, move funds into capital reserves. That discussion, uh, my recollection of that was we anticipate receiving the funds from the sale of the fire station, and that was what's going to mm -hmm. support the transportation implementation initiatives as those vet out. Um, um, but certainly, I mean, looking ahead, I mean, there's, there's a continuum of options there for the board to consider. Um, if you're not reducing current year taxes, when you do that, that will then count against expenditure of strength, though, for anything other than debt service, which is, again, one of the reasons that we always recommend debt service first is because that preserves our expenditure of strength mix. Mm -hmm. So to reduce the amount for debt service would be, you know, if you wanted to go further than what came out of committee, that would be the, the option of preference for staff but you could, you could always choose to put additional funds into um, uh, capital reserves if, if that's what you wanted to do. Well, I, I mean, I guess the question is, 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 is the third quarter looking better than the number we had been working from when we were doing the budget? Yeah, I can, it, it should be fairly close, but I will certainly review that and tell you the difference. Yeah, and if, it, and if, let's say there's $100,000 in there and we wanted to fund uh, microphones or chairs or, you know. Squad, get it over. Yeah, uh, yeah whatever, guns. Um, uh, you know, um, I mean, it might be worth bringing it up as an amendment and just see, you know, it, it, you know if, there's, if there's something there. If there's not something there, then obviously, you know, just wait till 2021. Our interest interest is moving downward. It's dropped a half a percent. Interest is sliding yes. down now. It yeah. could go farther. So I don't know. But um, you know, I when I propose what we think the interest income is going to be for the following year, I I don't make bold assumptions. You know, I try to make conservative assumptions, which means that if interest rates slide a little bit, we're still going to make our budget number. Mm -hmm. If they happen to continue to go up, 
compared to the budget metrics, then we have a favorable outcome. And uh, um, I would rather have $50,000 more revenues than to come up this time next year and say we're, we're short. So I, I try to make my best crystal ball guess of where I think those interest rates are going to hold. I don't think they're going to move a lot, but um, we should be able to take a quarter point change. And a lot of the other holdings are already fixed. You know, we hold investments. So. I don't understand this agenda. It's like us at six in this room, public work at six fifteen in this room. Were you anticipating we would be done at six fifteen? I don't make the And then JPNL six forty five in that room. I think that might have just been. I don't think that was very good. I have no idea. Swap I mean, we're, I'm not done with I mean, I think public works can have to meet in there because we're meeting here. We are public. Are you? You are public works. We public. We're budget right now. Yeah, but next we just stay here. Are we public works too? I'm just here with public yes. works. Yes, you're public works. <laughs> No, no, we're us. Oh my what God, this is okay. okay. We're on, we're on top. I have, this I have is... more questions. I have plenty of time. All right, I'm sorry. I'm really. I, we haven't had a public works item for a really long time. No, we have not. Like a year. Oh, obviously. <laughs> Okay, so my, well, my, my quite other question had to do with public works, and it was the, um, that issue about that vacancy in forestry, because there really did, there seemed like there wasn't a vacancy in forestry. Is that correct? Well, there, at the end of the day, there really wasn't a vacancy in forestry. There were two vacancies at the time we did the budget, which is where, um, you know, the, the board directed staff to put it somewhere, and that's where, where it ended up when they added, uh, added an additional 0.5 FTE vacancy factor in the 2019 budget. <coughs> Those positions were filled fairly quickly after the first of the year once we covered the total vacancy factors for public works that was uh, scheduled and worked in conjunction with Rebecca and, and DPW staff. So, um, well, they may not have fully fallen into the forestry division, the overall vacancy factor for public works was um, guaranteed by the delay of, of when we're going to hire those positions that were vacant. Uh, so overall, that, that was budgetary decline. Is there a, like a roll-up of all of public works? Uh, I believe that would be. I see roll up for revenues, but I, and then expenditures are all separated out. Um, that, that would be missing. Not here. There is a roll up. I apologize, it just did not get included here. Okay, I. I will, I will share that with you as well. I had, um, yeah, I had some questions about the capital too. All right. But obviously we don't have time. I don't think we have time to get into it. Well, I did try to present some information that I hope you find helpful um, in response to your comments from earlier today. And uh, I would just say on page 33 before we wrap up, or perhaps page 34. Um, page 34, you know, what we start out is looking at the, the adopted ending balance versus projected. And then, and then we kind of do the schedule here. But the other thing to note is that uh, right below the ending fund balance, you have restricted for debt proceeds. So we've got $300,000 in available bond proceeds that we weren't expecting to have. And uh, when we did 
did the budget. And the uh, primary source of that, just a, in a real quick, quick summary, is um, we did not uh, move forward with the Wilson Drive uh, amenities. 40,000 of that was supposed to be bond proceeds. Um, we, uh, I'm sorry, let me just double check here. What else did we not end up moving on? I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I, I think maybe we should schedule this for next meeting. Yeah, we can. Yeah. We can go over yeah, that's it. a good idea. We've got to change one more time. Yeah. The streetlight control boxes was another 100,000. So, uh, and then there were some favorable, some favorable outcomes. Some other contracts. So, I'd be happy to review it again. Wait, we have to move on. 
I have one question, but go ahead. On, on the, you have provided the budget workshop shop update attached to the notes from the last. What are you saying, Mike? The, the notes, the budget workshop, the wrap up session that yes. we did. It has these notes, but the notes don't, of course, actually, they aren't the action we agreed to or decided on. I mean, they're like preliminary notes, or I don't know. They should be final. I well, will, yeah, they, they like. I will double check to yeah, see what they I are not. They're see what I sent out. The numbers, I think, are, but the note, like <laughs> the fur truck. If, well, that was a worksheet note. The action, the action is, is what the budget number changes. Okay, so, so the notes are. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, they don't. No, I, I did not update the worksheet yeah, notes, I, only the action. I just get, if someone's yeah. resident is looking at this, they're going to go, well, what? Yeah, it's I, eliminate, and it's, it's not eliminated. It's, I will. That would be good. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. I will. Yeah. I will that. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, you might have talked about vacancy factor already. Um, yeah, we do. Okay, so it, I just didn't see it in the police department reduction of forty thousand. Did we meet our two two FTE? Did, did you just answer yes? I right. could you rephrase the question? Please? We budgeted two FTEs in total last year, and there's forty thousand more in, in DPW for forestry. But I was wondering if there's a reduction in police so that we actually did meet the two FTEs. I don't recall increasing the police FTEs, but I can look at my budget worksheets from 2019 and and, uh, and address that to you. Because police after. salaries are at 99.3, so I didn't see that they had a, had more than three of budget, right? Right. So I did not see a corresponding uh, decrease in the police budget. But if he would, if he put the vacancy in the budget number, I mean that's why. I mean, one way to do vacancy is a negative, and you show it as a separate line item, and then that makes a little more clear instead of lumping it in already. And then, anyway, I just want to know if we met the two point, the two FTE vacancy factor. Yeah, I will review my notes, but I, I believe we didn't met all vacancy factors in the 2019 budget. By by shifting it to please. I again, yeah, I can't. Okay. That, I that's just that Rebecca seems to think that. Okay, and then the last question was Wilson Drive, and why aren't we urban the furniture? In this year, it says because we we're waiting for the county, but we got our answer. Well, right, and so then, however, I believe we're talking about it. There you go. <laughs> um, our preference would be to not to have it delivered this year. We don't really have storage for it. Um, but if it were to be delivered next year, then the invoice would have to be booked to next year. That's fine. And storage, you mean you can't put benches out in winter or trash receptacles? Um, because I really like them in there sitting in the snow. They're sitting in the snow. There's nowhere to sit. It also, well, at this point, if we order them, we, I don't know that, we wouldn't get them installed. We cannot install them when there's snow on the ground. We have to have non-snow environment for installation. Okay. And, and they're like a six to eight week order. So, and it's snow. And it's November, so um, it's not my time. Okay, I, my preference would be that we had bought them and put them in as soon as we got the okay for the which was a long ago. Thank you. See, I mean, there was an article in the paper today that the county is still considering <laughs> certain yeah, routes. I don't know if yeah. our route is on. Didn't they? We got confirmation. Yeah, that was. They did. Well, that's amazing, but they were keeping their eyes on the walls. Well, but I would see what came out today. Mm -hmm. but I, I mean, it's yeah, a county's doing a new budget too, and I, th I think they mentioned 15, but I forgot it's 15 the open one, or they yeah. was 14. 14. Yeah, 15's on open. But that's a valid point, and I would definitely be happy to follow up with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, right, think, I think it's worth that. Yeah, because they were like doing budget that. amendments that mm -hmm. had to do with the bus routes, so yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll move to okay. um, adjourn. I call to order the Public Works Committee. Uh, we have two items on our agenda. Uh, the first the, is uh, the agenda title is a little different than the title of the memo. What we have on the agenda is really consider the RFP for the Southeast Area Combined Sewer Improvement Area. Back in September, staff had come 
work for the memo, um, uh, seeking input on if it should be sole sourced or not. We sent the staff back to prepare an RFP for the design for the southeast area. Um, this didn't design engineers would work with closely with MMSD, coordinate, make sure uh, the designs line up and that they confirm our earlier modeling just so that we, before we go in the final the design is we confirm the earlier modeling that's been done that meets our goals. Um, so that is what we have before us. Um, Leanne, do you want to say anything else? Or? Um, you may recall from um, previous discussions about construction projects that it is generally our preference to package engineering design with construction management and, and field or construction inspection. Um, we purposely did not do that with this project. Not because we don't think that's a good idea. We fully think that's a, a good idea and that there are many benefits to that. Um, the primary reason is that we are not anticipating construction to start until 2023. Um, and to ask a firm to give us a cost proposal for services to be provided, sorry, 22, um, two to three to five years out. Um, we, we just don't feel that that would be um, fiscally advantageous to the village. Um, there are still, still a, you know, a number of unknowns. The project is just somewhat undefined. Um, and, and to ask a firm to give us inspection rates and numbers, um, we, we just think that those costs would be much higher than, than they would be at a point closer to the start of construction when the project is, is completely and fully defined. Um, I guess the other point I would like to make is just to reiterate that um, this RFP was drafted by staff with assistance from MMSD's staff. Um, our, our village engineering firm was not involved in the drafting of the RFP, nor did they review it. I, so the the current version that we have of the construction plan, what's the latest What's the latest that we did after that? I, um, I believe we had phase one scheduled in 2022. No, no, I mean, I mean, was it, which, whatever the most recent iteration of what we're planning to do, have we got that, didn't we have to get permits and stuff on that for DNR? No. So we haven't, so we don't need, a permit permit. Yes, we do. But you can't get a permit on a project you haven't designed. So we have like a conceptual idea of what to do, yes. but we don't actually have design. Right. Well, this this is the purpose of this RFP is to engage a, a design. I guess I'm just, I was confused that, you know, this, it, you know, certain pipes and scheduling were presented to us, but now it's like, we're kind of back to square one. Well, I mean, you were doing long range financial planning, right? By definition, that's pretty conceptual. So we were talking about a, a, a conceptual sewer project um, that we have a mock, that we have had an engineer model. So th there's some parameters that have been defined, um, but the actual engineering design of the project has not begun. I mean, how different, like, as we get through the actual engineering, though, I mean, I would hope that what the engineer, you know, gave to us should be, like, possible, doable. I mean, maybe maybe the cost would be different, but the basic layout of where the sewer's actually going to be and the amount and what kind of protection that gets us for a certain number of inches per hour or whatever, the, that, you know, we should be in the range, right? Well, th yeah, yes, that's what they're doing. So they're, they're taking the model and this conceptual idea that we have, how we're going to mitigate and reduce the risk of basement backups, 
and they're going to turn it into a project that can be built. And while they're doing that, they will confirm all of those assumptions that we have made to this point. Okay, and then once they have, so once they have taken it that next step towards reality, then that's what they take to DNR to get permitted. Yes. Does Corps of Engineers also have to permit it? No. Just DNR? Yes. But we've met with DNR and said this is our concept, and they've said, yeah, this will work. Um, we met with, so as part of the, um, I'm pretty sure it's the same. The combined sewer service area environmental assessment that's referenced in the memo. Yeah. Part of that exercise was to determine the feasibility of separating the combined sewer area. Right. Um, that involved meetings with DNR and Army Corps. Um, DNR said, under current regulation, stormwater regulation, we cannot permit, we, we cannot allow you to separate the combined sewer system. So at that point we said, okay, now we know. Now this simply becomes putting bigger pipes and more pipes in the ground, and it will all still go to MMSD and to the deep tunnel and for treatment. Okay. Um, so MMSD will have to permit our design and I use the word permit loosely, really it's a design approval. They have to look at it and say, yep, our system can handle the additional flow that you are going to give us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they know, they already have the model that, that we will be designing the yeah. projects off of. Right. They know exactly what we're doing yeah. and what we want to do. I don't anticipate that to be anything more than a formality. Okay. I just, but I just, it is a necessary step. I mean, I guess, you know, what actually gets put in the ground, I was less concerned about the, the scheduling because we did um, put a lot of um, um, discussion into, you know, how, how we're going to fit everything in, but now it's like, well, that may not work. <laughs> well, and, and that, that is, that's still reality. Okay. Um, you'll notice in the RFP, one of the things that we ask them to do is to review and confirm our conceptual phasing plan. Um, know, well, yeah, they're like reviewing everything. I right. Mean, they're reviewing so, how so much flow it would take and the So they're looking at everything. that. But that's primarily from a constructability standpoint. What they're going to look at it, they're going to say, yes, based on you know what we know about construction, um, that can be built in a single construction season. No problem, go ahead. Okay. Or they can look at it and say, yeah. You know, so yeah. that's just another one of those checks that we've built into this process. And do, do we know when they will have it? Like, will they have an answer for us when we're considering the long range financial plan next year? I mean, so if everything's up in the air. Uh, I, I, well, um, Because uh, it just—it sort of feels like we kind of worked yeah. really hard to try to make some decisions, and now everything's up in the air again. Well, I, I would—I I absolutely understand that. I, I would say not up in the air, but this is a massive investment, and so yeah. we, we just want to really make sure that we're doing our due diligence. Um, it may be that they could have an answer for your June long-range financial, your pre-meeting. Absolutely, I would expect that they could have one in August. Questions? It's key to get in, we get these people in place early so that yeah. MMSD can. We, 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 we need to get them on board. Yeah. One, one other note, if you permit me, um, the, the district has approached staff about using River Park Lot C, which is the large parking lot near the Ball Diamond, um, for construction staging during their project. Um, they, that will require a construction easement, and they're working on putting that, those formal documents together. Um, I expect the district and its engineer 
to be in front of you late July, January, early February to give um, you a presentation and, and just kind of talk to you about their upcoming project. And when is their construction supposed to start? Uh, probably December of 2020. I'm going to go through the summer of 2021. Uh, December of 2021. Okay. So one of, one of the things that we're going to be doing um, is, and that we've been talking, or in the Parks Commission side, you know, as we're kind of reviewing different parks, we've been mentioning to stakeholder groups, like the Little League, and the Kickers, that there is a project coming up. They're in the process of design. We haven't estimated time and that there's no details at this point. <coughs> But it is um, a very real need that most activities will likely need to relocate from that area potentially um, throughout the scope. Including our snow? <coughs> okay. Including our snow or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need a snow solution. I want to look on the So we're, as um, Dean, Liam has been very helpful as they kind of, because they're in design and they're still trying to figure out pieces, so there's no definitive answers right now, but you can expect to hear as they start to narrow down their design options more frequent updates from us relative to this topic. I, mean, I, I don't anticipate that we would say no. I mean, challenging given the fact that they're yeah. 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 So that'll be something we'll have to deal with. Sure. Yeah. And, then, and mention it because I have started communicating that to people. You know, if they haven't been aware of it. I just met with the kickers last week on something else. And one of the gentlemen was aware of the project. I think because he's a commissioner, I don't know, commissioner or something for our investigation. So it's like, oh, okay, you understand. But, you know, in the larger scope, not many people are thinking about sewer mm -hmm. construction all the time. But we did, it is going to have a significant impact. But it's one that is temporary. It's for a year and, and has a very significant benefit for a very small quadrant of our community. So. Yeah, I noticed that um, Edgewood, too, that there was discussion that it would be would be reconstructed, but it's just going to be. That was our initial thought. Um, their MMSD's initial design concept included a mix of open cut and tunneling, and it, through this stage of the pre-design work, um, the, the engineer has ruled out open cut. Um, so all of it will be, at least all of it within the Edgewood right of way um, will be tunneled. Um, so that means fewer, you know, less, far less pavement disturbance than we initially anticipated. And so, quite honestly, it was the city that said, um, yeah, that's not on our, that's not on our schedule anytime soon, and we're not, we're not going to participate. In a reconstruction, and you know what do you do? You can't reconstruct half of the road. Yeah. So um, they they agreed. You know, we said our our significant concern was that there's some areas where the base is failing, and we're seeing pretty good settling. And they they agreed to help us coordinate um, base repair, and then they will do the asphalt resurfacing and actually under one of their. HIPP contracts, which we've utilized for some of our own overlays, um, and, and they they you know agreed to coordinate all that and do all the legwork there and just send us a bill for our half. So, so did they? Um, when we talked about this in the long range financial plan, I was saying we're going to need to move off Edgewood because we wanted to coordinate with MMSD. Did did that what just happened? We moved up, up in the air, which after the fact. Um, we didn't. We did not move it. It had always been in, anticipated for immediately following sewer construction. Without so it, it will occur in 2022. So after I mean, the city's done? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What changed is that it's no longer a full reconstruction of the roadway. Right. Correct. But it's a mill and overlay with addressing in larger areas, portions of the base. Is yes. that fair? Correct. Um, because the city said, 
No, if we're we're not going to fully reconstruct this if we're not tearing it right. If they're pushing the pipe underground and that open. Right. Pipe. I mean, they they said we have lots of roads in far worse condition than Edgewood, and we can't justify spending the money there. We have the RFP before us this evening. Another item on the agenda. So I, I think this is, we should recommend to move forward to, to the board uh, this RFP for approval by the board at the next November meeting. I agree. Okay. I agree, but I'd like you to be clear on the agenda that it's for engineering yeah. design. And that is my mistake. My apologies. I mean, I, I, you know, you don't have to apologize. Just, no, but I wanted to. Because I think you should correctly, so sure. we're following up with you. All right. Next item is consider RFP for the Hubbard Park Canoe Kayak Launch Design. Uh, we talked about this in the budget. It's a TID 3 funded project for 2020. Um, and Leanne has prepared an RFP. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, okay. I, I think the only thing I would point out is that the timeline is a little loose. Um, and that is entirely because I don't have a good understanding of the length of time required for DNR um, permit, wetland permit approvals. If it goes relatively quickly, we could look at a 20, you know, fall 2020 construction. Um, if it does not, then I think we will regroup and reassess the timeline at the point that we get the approval. Mm -hmm. and just make sure it comes after the Wilson Drive's benches get installed. <laughs> How much did we budget for this project? It's coming out of TIP 3 and... Um, 40? 40? 20.
talked about the concept of design when they did the, the river trail. And that was a really, that was a very engineered design. Whereas in this RFP, we're asking for something, you, you use good phrasing about it, but to like naturally low impact. Low, low, low impact. Low impact, thank you, to move into it. Because I, just in parks in general, my philosophy will always be to not construct things, but to build them to the landscape. <laughs> Um, as much as possible, and particularly with the scope of the river, giving mean, changes in fluctuation and what we've seen in water, le water, water level. And then in this particular area, the permitting will be, you know, it's just a question mark and how long it's going to take for that. I've never permitted anything on this river, and that is different. Do you think it's going to come in less? Is that what you're Then what? Then whatever number we have out there? I, I think it's an educated guess mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Some of them are in the 25 to 30,000 mm -hmm. range, but then so it's what design the, ramps, so ramps, there's one time like your early ecology in the Mountain Valley, there's some up in. Right. The, for, the, the question for me is going to be the slope on this slope, one, right. and how much, but I mean, I'm not an engineer, <laughs> but right. just having practically done it and then tried to put putting in in this particular area, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of where the challenge Will be and then the permitting. But are we talking concrete from the, from the driveway, concrete all the way down to the river, or are we talking like just something like at Urban Ecology, there's just like a concrete thing actually at the lip of the river. Mm -hmm. It's not like paved all the way to get there. Right. You don't have to pave all the way there um, if you don't want to. Another part of that is also the accessibility factor. Um, the slope will also have a large determinant in that. Um, but no one, as far as I'm, and I wasn't here when you had the first plan, but no one had something that said, or maybe they did, they had a, like a concrete plant that went all the way. Yeah. It was almost cut into the, it was very manufactured. It, it was, um, it was the, my opinion, it was the wrong scale for that park. It, it was like, ooh, here's the canoe launch. Oh wait, and here's other park. Yeah. And here's what? And here's Hubbard Park. Oh. I mean, it was just, it was very, right, very, right. Yeah. It was also pretty, pretty minimal. Are we still talking about should we put price in or not? Is that, I mean, I just, I just worry that someone would, I mean, if we're thinking something minimal at like 25 to 35,000 total, you know, which is what I'm thinking, you know, then, I mean, somebody might, if we don't give any indication here, it's, I mean, I suppose they would call and ask, but, I mean, someone might come in with like $10,000. I mean, you could easily spend $10,000 designing some fancy thing. Um, I think you'll spend $10,000 designing something not fancy, yeah. I think we should put the price that we budget it. We probably budget this. Well, I mean, money to construct it. I mean, somehow we have to get an idea of the overall before we award the design some idea of. You can't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. That's part of the job of your designer is to, to flesh yeah. out the concepts, design a concept, and give you a cost estimate. What do we do for the fire station? Did we put the cost? I'm just wondering. Sometimes it's, an, it's a complete estimate, right? And they might design something totally different. But do we? Did we put the cost? Or how much we had budgeted? I know we did for the police station. We put in 3.5. I don't know, but I mean, this is project scope. I'm just wondering. Do soil samples, do permitting, and provide 50% construction documents. I mean, we don't have a, we don't have a stage in there. Like, we have a concept from Strand that nobody likes. 